I'm Jordan Trimble. I'm the president and CEO of Sky Harbor Resources. Uh, Sky Harbor is a high-grade uranium exploration and early stage development company with projects in the Athabasca Basin of northern Saskatchewan. It's the highest grade depository of uranium in the world and consistently ranked as a top five mining district by the Fraser Institute. We've been around for almost a decade now. We saw a unique contrarian opportunity uh, 10 years ago to start building up an asset base in this part of the world. We were able to acquire projects at very attractive valuations. And we've now built uh, the project portfolio up to 24 properties uh, covering over half a million hectares. So we're one of the largest mineral tenure holders in Northern Saskatchewan. We have projects that range from earlier stage exploration properties right through to more advanced stage exploration prop, uh, projects that uh, either host small uranium deposits or have uh, high grade uranium in previous drilling. We're very much focused on our two co-flagship projects, Russell Lake, uh, where we're carrying out a 10,000 meter drill program currently assays pending, a lot of news and catalysts upcoming from that project, uh, and our Moore Lake project, which we've just commissioned a 43101 uh, mineral resource estimate at. So that'll be a big milestone and catalyst coming up as well uh, for the company. And then the other 20 plus projects are a part of our prospect generator business. So we actively seek partner companies to come in and advance these secondary and tertiary projects. We've signed eight option agreements, two of which are now joint ventures, and these eight option agreements total to over 85 million in combined project consideration. So that's exploration funded by these partner companies as well as cash and share payments coming into Sky Harbor. So a very, very busy uh, last few years and an even busier year coming up as far as catalysts and news flow is concerned. Having the hybrid model of focused exploration uh, at our core projects coupled with prospect generation at our non-core projects uh, is a differentiating feature about Sky Harbor. We're expecting to receive uh, about 3 million in cash and stock over the next 12 months. So it helps keep our equity dilution in check as we monetize some of these non-core projects and have partner companies fund the exploration. And after uh, the next 12 months, uh, we are expecting another upwards of 9 million from the summer of 2024 to the summer of 2025, assuming that again, all these companies complete their respective earnings. Uh, so this is money that we can capital, that we can put towards the drilling and the work that we're carrying out at our main projects of Russell and more like, and we can use it to make additional acquisitions. That's something else that we've done a great job of over the last several years is we continue to grow our asset portfolio by staking and by doing deals with other companies uh, to acquire these projects and build out the portfolio. And then on, as I mentioned, on some of the other projects that are non-core, we look to option or farm them out. Uh, and again, it's allowed us to, to stay focused uh, at our main projects. It allowed us to keep our equity dilution in check and uh, it also uh, provides our investors and shareholders with exposure not just to what we're doing at our main projects but it also uh, uh, it provides exposure to these other companies partner companies that are actively advancing these other projects and we typically do retain uh, an equity position in these other companies as well so you are getting exposure to these other partner companies through a minority interest in the project equity position that Sky Harbor holds in the company. And on some of the projects, we also keep an NSR on the property as well. So there's been a lot of positive developments in the uranium market in particular uh, in the last several years. Uh, we've seen a major reversal in sentiment uh, as we're seeing more and more countries adopt nuclear energy uh, as really the only source of baseload 24 seven emissions free electricity generation. So the three major macro trends underpinning this nuclear renaissance that we're seeing globally uh, is decarbonization. Most countries looking to decarbonize by 2050 or 2060. Again, nuclear energy is going to have to play a key role in doing that. Uh, on top of that electrification, um, we're seeing more electricity consumption globally, especially with the advent of electric vehicles uh, and in a much more digital world. And then last but not least is energy security and independence. We're seeing this market, the nuclear fuel and uranium market, bifurcate east and west. Uh, we're producing globally right now uh, about 140 to 145 million pounds of uranium used as nuclear fuel and nuclear power generation. Yet uh, the 140 to 145 million pounds of primary mine supply isn't nearly enough 
to meet the demand of about 190 million pounds uh, in reactor requirements. So the secondary supplies that have met that shortfall are dwindling. You add on top of that uh, some of these uh, physical holding companies like the Sprott Physical Trust, Yellow Cake, a couple new ones that have come to market as well or are coming to market uh, that are sequestering millions of pounds out of the market. It's exacerbating uh, this uh, supply demand imbalance. And then when you look at it east and west, the West, Canada, Western Europe, Australia, the US just simply do not produce nearly enough uranium uh, to power the nuclear power plants in the West. And as uh, things have deteriorated uh, in Russia, Ukraine with the war, um, the largest producer of uh, uranium globally is Kazakhstan, it shares a border with Russia. Uh, and, uh, and then Russia itself is a large uh, producer of uranium as well. So these, uh, these cheap sources of uranium and nuclear fuel over the last 15 to 20 years, like Kazakhstan, Russia, and Uzbekistan, uh, these uh, primary sources of uranium uh, that Western utilities have been heavily reliant on, uh, they're not gonna continue to be there uh, as a reliable source of cheap pounds. So Western utilities are gonna have to start sourcing more material uh, from Western uh, companies, and that's where uh, companies like Sky Harbor that are active in the Athabasca Basin stand to benefit. I'd say right now, um, it, a couple of things. One, uh, the next 12 to 18 months will be the most catalyst-rich period for the company. We've got the 10,000 meters uh, of drilling at our recently acquired Russell Lake project. Uh, we've signed an exploration agreement with English River First Nation at the project as well. We're permitted for all the activities and drilling uh, that we have going on there, but that's gonna provide a lot of news flow for the company and its shareholders over the next uh, several months. We're already planning a second program given what we're seeing in this first phase, uh, in this first program of drilling. So the, the, the uh, results from Russell Lake will be a significant catalyst uh, in the near term, uh, as well as this uh, 43101 resource estimate at the adjacent Moore Lake project. And we are planning additional drilling at Moore Lake in conjunction with Russell Lake. Russell, fortunately for us, uh, has a road, it has power, it is an exploration camp, so we can stage out of Russell when we're drilling at Russell, but also at Moore Lake. Uh, and then the partner-funded programs. We're expecting several uh, of those uh, eight partner companies to be either drilling or carrying out significant exploration programs uh, at our various projects in the portfolio over the next 12 to 18 months. So lots of exploration, lots of exposure to new discovery potential, but also keep an eye out for new, uh, new project deals, option agreements that we sign with new partner companies. We have another 13 projects in the portfolio that we own 100% of that we haven't signed options or JV agreements on. And last but not least, the uranium market. We continue to see the, the, the thesis play out. We're seeing the uranium price move higher. We're seeing much more contracting volume. That's a key metric to look at. We're seeing the contract volumes move uh, quite a bit higher. Uh, this year, it looks like we're on pace to hit that replacement rate of 180 million uh, pounds of, of material contracted, which typically corresponds with a much higher uranium price. So we are seeing, as I said, this thesis play out very nicely and uh, there aren't that many ways to play it um, you know it's still a relatively small sector sub 45 billion in combined market cap between all the equities uh, so as capital comes into the sector uh, you you should see the equities uh, start to move and there is a disconnect between the uranium price right now which has been moving higher and most of the, the uranium mining equities I think there's a very strong re-rating potential uh, for these small and mid-cap uranium equities over the next six to 12 months.